That is cool, yeah, no, this code is a lot more advanced than whatever Roblox AI gave me. Every single video that I made showcasing AI, like, you know, either the texture generator or just the, the Roblox assistant, I would keep getting these comments, right? And they weren't like one of those comments which are like hidden in the depths with like one like, which is probably the, the guy who wrote the comment. These were like actually like highly liked comments with some of them saying that like, oh, it's going to take our jobs. It's going to, you know, it's, it's very good. And then other people would say that it's like very bad and that like when they tried using it, they didn't get anything out of it, which like, I don't know, man, those are, you know, pretty contradictory to me. But what's funny is that before we had like the Roblox AI, people would just use Chad GPT, right? I mean, like when Chad GPT first came out, that was like the big push towards AI, right? Like I consider Chad GPT to be like a founding father of AIs at this point. And while, you know, people still complain like, oh, this is very scary, you know, it might take over like uh, programmers, etc. Which I understand, especially when the AI itself is like saying that it can explain this code. But I have been in the Roblox developer space for a while. And even when Chad GPT came out, I didn't see many people actually like talking about it. So I guess the question is, which one is better? Now, at first glance, you may say, oh yeah, Roblox AI is the clear winner. I mean, it's called Roblox AI. Like this is literally what it's made for. And this isn't even including the fact that the assistant can actually not interact, but it can see like what items you have in the explorer window. Well, ChatGPT doesn't, right? It can only work with code. But where ChatGPT does well is the fact that, well, number one, it's one of the most powerful AI models. Like I said before, it serves as a founding father to many modern AIs. And I assume this includes the Roblox AI. And you know, on an obvious note, ChatGPT can do a lot more than just Roblox. Like if I were to ask the Roblox assistant to give me a chicken piccata recipe. I don't know if I spell that correctly, but let's see. Sorry, but as a Roblox assistant, I, I can only answer questions really, yeah, build, grow, monetize Roblox creations. You know, not exactly what I was asking, but it's fine. So for this video, I'm not going to be ranking them based on general use, because obviously Roblox AI can only do Roblox. So, you know, in case you haven't figured out already, I'll be using ChatGPT to effectively see, is it better than the AI literally made and designed around Roblox? So what I'm going to do is I'll run three tests, and the test will basically involve me asking the same thing to both AI. Guys. And the questions will vary in difficulty, right? So first we're going to start off with something very easy and something that like even I with my three years of development experience might not know. And then after we're done that, you know, just for fun, I'll try and get both of them to make like an actual playable game, which I will publish no matter the result. All right, so let's start off with the first and easiest question. I'm a beginner developer. Could you please explain local var is equal to five? I don't know. And then I will copy this question and paste it into Chad GPT. The only change I'll make is to say Roblox Lua developer, just so you know, ChatGPT knows what language we're dealing with. Alright, so I just got to the end, but it's been typing for a while. Look at this. Certainly, let me break down the specific- I like how like excited these AI sound. Let's break down the uh, specific line of code you're asking about. The use of local before the variable name indicates this variable is local in scope. A variable can be global or local, a local variable means it can only be executed within block of code. To reduce potential errors from unintended interactions between different parts of the code. Okay, that actually is a very good example. The name var is the identifier for the variable. This is a name you can choose to refer to the value stored in the variable. In this case, var is being declared, which means that it's being created and given a name for the first time in the scope. All right, this is one of those things which I think it could have explained a little lighter, because I feel like if I was a complete developer, the name var is the identifier for the variable. Like, I don't know. I feel like if I was talking to a beginner, I would just explain it as basic as I could. Like, oh yeah, this is just the name of the variable. To be fair, its goal is to give us as much information as possible, so I'm fine with that. The equal sign is the assignment operator in Lua. Again, you know, could have used simpler words, but it's fine. Used to assign a value to a variable, uh, takes the value on its right side, and stores it in the variable named on its left side. That's actually a really good example. Because I don't know, like when they say like it's the assignment operator, like a beginner can look at that and be like, what, what the hell does that even mean, right? But here it's like, Oh yeah, it takes the value on the right and puts it on in the value on the left, like right, left, right? You can visualize it. I love that. And then the value five, number five is being assigned. Numbers are a basic data type that can represent both integer and floating point numbers. Okay, fine. Putting it all together, it creates a local variable named var and initializes it with the integer value five. So overall, I actually really like this explanation. I know I complained before, but I do love how it actually is getting into the specifics. I think this is because I said that I'm a beginner developer, which is pretty cool. I'm not the biggest fan of it using like a bunch of these like you know more complex words that beginners might not understand but bro like honestly this one line taking the value from the right and adding it to the left i think this literally makes it nearly perfect for me i don't know i've never seen ai actually like 
give you a like a visualization like this is cool all right so it responded and it responded twice that doesn't seem fair all right i mean look response two is longer so i'll go with that certainly in lua the line local var equals five is used to declare a variable named var and assign it the value five okay good ex okay simple explanation i like that local keyword is used to declare a local variable meaning the scope of the variable is limited to its current block of code or function in which it is declared all right straight off the bat even i right now like reading this barely understood what this means like obviously i know what a scope is and everything but it's like yeah no this is this isn't really understandable to a beginner variables declared with local cannot be accessed from outside their scope this is in contrast to global variables which can be accessed from anywhere in the script see again this is interesting because like this actually adds a, a layer of confusion i feel like because this says uh global variables can be accessed from anywhere in the script but like so can local variables like obviously if you make a local variable inside like a for loop for example then you can only access it inside of that for loop but if i make a variable just inside of a script i can access it inside of that script var is the name of the variable you can choose any valid variable name according to lua's naming rules okay this is actually simple i like this this is the assignment operator okay same wording as the roblox ai used to assign a value to a variable. All right, I mean, that's simple. I like that. Uh, no, you know, right to left analogy, which um, already it's, it's worse in my eyes. Five is the value being assigned to the variable var. In this case, it's number five, but it could be any valid Lua value, such as a string, boolean table etc so chat gpt is a lot more to the point it feels like like you know i ask it like hey i'm a beginner could you please explain what this line means and it doesn't seem to quite like understand that i'm a beginner you know like for example the roblox ai actually did bother to explain a lot of the things right so it's a block of code and again you know right side and left side i will, I will keep bringing this up i love this so much chat gpt here reminds me of like you know those like tutorials you used to watch as a beginner where it's like they would just do something and like never explain what that is like i remember i was watching like a beginner you know roblox lua tutorial and this guy just started using coroutines and he's like oh don't worry guys you know this is just to make the game work but it's like bro at least can you explain to me what like a coroutine is like obviously now i know what that is right although you should still post your comment you know complaining that oh he doesn't know what a coroutine is haha ha, ha, because you know i love more comments on my videos but yeah roblox ai aims to actually explain everything and for this reason the point goes to roblox ai over chat gpt the next easy question i'll ask both AIs is going to be related to trying to bug fix the code. So I'll just say like, you know, I'm a beginner developer, uh, explain why doesn't work. Now, obviously this code would work, right? And so what I'm thinking would be funny is what if I just intentionally um, misplace it? So yeah, game.players instead of game.players. And this actually works as another test to chat GPT because Roblox AI obviously knows like the services and everything, right? But does ChatGPT know that, you know, players exist as a service? What if I actually mess it up so much that it's not even like you don't even know that this is supposed to be players? Malat Terp. So here the challenge is actually finding out, okay, what has the get players function, right? Why doesn't this work? The code doesn't work because game.mlaterp is not a valid property or object in Roblox. And so it gives us the example of looping through the players which okay fair enough yeah the for loop can be used to iterate over every player make sure to use game.players instead of game.mlaterp to access the player service and retrieve the list of players you know what that was actually clear concise and to the point i was like expecting it to give me another like long winded um explanation but i actually like it because like this question clearly does not need a long explanation like i can see how like this first question could prompt it to go like like oh this guy's a dumbass right local var equals five like how does he not understand that but for this question and being more simple and to the point is exactly what I wanted to see. But now let's see if ChatGPT can give us a similar answer. All right, so immediately I'm seeing players. Okay. In Roblox Lua, game is a predefined global variable that represents the current instance of the game. The property Mlaterp, oh, that's such a that's such a funny word. You know what, bro? If you comment Mlaterp, you'll get a like from me, okay? And maybe a reply if I'm feeling generous. The property Mlaterp does not exist within the game object by default. Therefore, calling game Mlaterp will result in an error because Roblox does not recognize this property. That actually is a very good explanation and this actually is the correct code and it's explaining what's happening so it gets a reference to the players get players calls the get players method on the player service this prints the result of get players to the output window in roblox studio by using this you correctly receive the service and you can call get players blah 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 okay for this i actually like chat gpt's answer more than roblox ai's like i said before chat gpt is a lot more just like information based like it just tells you the direct information which technically is right but might be hard for like a player to digest but here i only gave it one task right like in this question like sure this may seem simple 
But this actually gives ChatGPT a lot of tasks because it now needs to explain to me what local is, what var is, what equals means, what five is, you know, etc. But here I'm just saying, okay, this isn't working, please fix. And it's actually being very direct. So, okay, this is what game is. Mletrip doesn't exist, so use players if you want to use get players, which works a lot better compared to this answer, which doesn't explain what game is, right? It doesn't really explain what services are. And like, even though it understands what I was trying to do, the answer that it gives me is like a for loop for some reason. Roblox AI feels more like you have like a friend who's trying to explain like Roblox code to you. This casual and friendly approach doesn't work nearly as well as like what ChatGPT gave me. So I'll give ChatGPT the point for this one. And the last easy question that I want to ask AI is to actually try and write code for the game. Write me code that makes every player who joins the game explode. And then I'll ask the same thing to ChatGPT. All right, so it gave me the script, but it hit me with that. It's important to note that creating a script that causes players to explode upon joining a game may result in a negative experience for players and violate Roblox's community guidelines. Imagine imagine that. Imagine getting banned for this. That's amazing. So it gives me the code, which I'll playtest in a bit, and it actually gives me the explanation. So we start by getting a reference and define a function, do this, do this, blah, blah, blah. Now, Roblox AI also gave me the code, but it didn't explain anything. So we just said, oh yeah, here's the script. So yeah, so let's just try it out. So I made one for ChatGPT and I made one for Roblox AI. So for Roblox AI, I'll just copy this here. And for ChatGPT, I'm going to copy the code and I will paste it over here. So let's try out Roblox AI first. Okay, so I'm going to disable uh, ChatGPT. All right, so I'm joining the game and nothing happened. All right, then how about we enable ChatGPT and disable Roblox AI? And I get an error which attempts to index nail with humanoid root part. Okay, so both have failed. All right, so let's see the Roblox AI, right? So it makes the function, it gets the character from the player, and it says if character, it makes the humanoid variable, and if humanoid, then it makes an explosion. You know why I think this doesn't work? Let me try something. Player character or player dot character added weight. Okay, let's try this one one tiny change okay one very simple itty bitty change and let's see if it works who knows beautiful beautiful yeah so my character it's still walking so do you know make of that what you will but hey an explosion happened okay yeah so the issue with roblox ai is that it didn't bother actually making sure that the character is loaded and then chat gpt let's see so it gets the player service okay it makes the function so it creates it creates a part for some reason and then it sets its position to the players dot character humanoid root part position and then it um waits one second and then destroys the part all right so first things first i'm not i'm not seeing an explosion here i'll be honest it makes the part but it it doesn't explode it it just it, it destroys it that's an instant win for the roblox ai all right so i found this raycast code which you know looks fairly complicated so what i'll do is i'll write down the code here uh i probably probably should remove the comments that you know are explaining exactly what the code is doing and then yeah so if i highlight this code i believe i can just ask it to explain this code sure i will do that okay promising in summary this code is used to cast array from a specific point in a direction within the roblox game world checking for intersections if one is found it prints the position and normal of the intersection points of the console this functionality is often used in games collisions line of sight physics blah 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 okay that was actually a really good explanation like i didn't even know physics service was a thing i'll be honest this roblox lua code performs a ray cast using physics service to detect collisions with physical objects in the game world all right, and so yeah, this basically is the same thing. So like it explains physics service, what, what this does, this, 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 blah, blah, blah. I like the response of Roblox AI better just because it actually, like, first of all, it uses color, which is always great. And then it actually like gives us the examples. Like it actually shows us the code while explaining it, which is amazing. While ChatGPT, like in a very boring fashion, just goes from like line to line. All right, so now it's time to bug fix. And here's the code that I wrote. So this is just a very simple code that's supposed to make a tween. Now from the get-go, you probably see that tween service is misspelled, okay? We're giving it the tween info, which seems fine, but then enum easing direction and easing style are switched because easing style is supposed to be first. And then I say false, which doesn't make sense because it's supposed to be the repeat count, which is a number. And then to end it off, I say that transparency uh, should be equal to a vector three value, which obviously isn't going to work because the transparency is a number and not a vector three. So let's highlight this code and let's say, can you explain why? But here's the summary of the issues, right? So typo in tween service, incorrect reference to tween info, replace tween info with ti in the create function call. 
I didn't even- oh, you know what's funny? I didn't even do this on purpose. Alright, you know what? I guess- I guess the assistant did help me. Inappropriate property and value. Change transparency equals to vector 3 to transparency equals 1. Here's how the corrected code should look. TI is equal to this. And it's funny, it didn't actually complain about easing direction being first or this being false. If I run the game, let's see what happens. Uh, second argument expects enum easing style limpin. Okay, guess what, Roblox assistant? You're not taking our jobs anytime soon. Haha, <laughs> how do I, how do I talk? There we go, okay. Alright, so typo in tween service, okay. Incorrect tween info parameters, yes! The third parameter you're passing should be enum easing style, not enum easing direction. Oh, this is great, yeah, so easing style is first, then easing direction, then it makes the repeat count, and then makes it false. And yeah, it sets the transparency to be equal to 1 and not a vector. And so then if I copy this code, yep, there we go. That actually is insane though how ChadGPT was able to help me more than the AI made for Roblox, like that is crazy. So for the final hard question, which is AI writing code, can AI make a data store script? Because look, all of you keep asking me like, oh, make a data store video. Like, look, number one, you can go to the description, buy my course, it's like $20, it has like all the amazing data store scripts you could ever ask for. Maybe you don't want to waste $20, or maybe you just don't like hearing me talk, right? Both are fair. I want every player to have have a cache value data stored and is saved write me a script that does exactly this oh wow that was actually pretty fast so let's see if this works let's actually read the script real quick so it makes data store okay then it makes a data store called the player cache okay and then whenever a new player joins it makes a leader stats folder makes the cache it makes a p call which returns the player's data and so if success then cache value is equal to cache value and then here it just connects to the player somehow you must publish this game to the web to access data store fail to load cache value connect is not a valid member of player players the original app i mean look i know this is technically cheating but what if i were to take this and then just all right so it needed a bit of my help all right but let's see let's see if this works okay Okay, so I have, I'm, I'm very tiny for some reason. I don't know why this is, but, and it seems to be fine. So I have the cache. Okay, so let me actually increase my cache. Okay, so yeah, leader stats, cache. Let me set it to 10, like so. Okay. And then if I were to leave the game, it works. It works. Look at that. I'm still short, and look, it's 10 cash. Now, obviously, like, yeah, the script didn't work at first, and, like, if you wanted to add any more values, this just, this wouldn't cut it, so, so my course is still worth it, but I am really impressed about this. That is cool. And honestly, I know that I'm supposed to, like, narrate the code and everything, but I'm pretty tired right now, so let's just copy and see if it works. Oh, that's interesting. So the cache is still 10, even though I, oh, I see why. So it, it used the same name, so it also called it player cache and it also called the thing cache. So it's effectively doing the same thing, but here it's actually working. That is cool. Yeah, no, this code is a lot more advanced than whatever Roblox AI gave me. Now it is missing a good amount of features, like certain, you know, security elements, um, a default data table, or just the ability to add more values. Which again, bro, if you want those, I have a core. But yeah, the fact that this didn't give me an error makes this an immediate win for me. And yeah, don't forget to comment Mullet Chirp if you haven't already. Um, again, you know, courses, $20, 50% off for next three days, huh? And as always, we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.